Welcome to the Perlo Podcast. We talk construction, its people, its challenges, its opportunities. We talk to industry and trade experts, movers and shakers, and people who get buildings built right. Join us, you won't regret it. Welcome to the Perlo Podcast. I am Alyssa Looney. I am the Strategic Initiatives Director here at Perlo Construction, and I am joined by a couple of repeat guests today. Chris McLaughlin, our Vice President of Pre-Construction, and Todd Dewey, our Vice President of Business Development. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. We're here today to unpack a couple of common terms in the construction industry, and we're talking about how a property owner can procure a general contractor to work on their project. There's really a couple different broad options, and we're not gonna get too much into some of the nuances, but when an owner decides that they want to build a building or renovate their space, they have to decide how they're going to pick which general contractor to use. And in broad terms, there is hard bid, which is where they select several contractors and ask them to give them their best price based on a set of documents. And the second option is to do more of a negotiated strategy where they work with one specific contractor to come up with their price and complete their work. Um, So the broad terms are hard bidding and negotiated. And we're going to talk and compare and contrast a little more about those today. So in an effort to talk a little more about them, let's focus on them individually and then we'll compare and contrast as we go. So Chris, do you want to talk to us more about what does it mean to hard bid a project? Yes. So with a hard bid project, the the main situation is that you need all of the documents 100% done. The design needs to be 100% complete, the civil design, the architectural design, the structural landscaping mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection, all of those documents need to be done so you can solicit bids and get competitive subcontractor bids. It requires a much more defined scope as to what the scope of the project is. And then, so once the scope is defined, the project documents are done, the construction documents are complete, then uh, an owner would need to select several general contractors to bid the project. So they need to find competent general contractors that are uh, experienced in that type of work. And then traditionally, there's a hard bid date and a time specific that it needs to be turned in. And then it is typically the selection is on the lowest cost or the lowest price submitted by a general contractor. And so the the bidding deadline is usually high stress, down to the last minute, waiting for subcontractor bids to come in to get it assembled and out the door to the owner. It's a very, very high stress operation. Yeah. And so that deadline comes and goes, you've either turned in your bid or not. And once the bids are turned in and an owner looks at it, they say, here's all my lineup from highest to lowest, and I'm gonna pick the lowest cost. Typically, they pick the lowest cost. And that, now you have hard bid your project. Correct. So Todd, talk to us about negotiating a project. What does that look like? Yes, well, the word negotiate um, fault comes into play right away. Um, it's usually negotiating terms of a contract, which might include price, might include schedule, it might include scope, quality, Um, it might also um, include individual team experience too. So with negotiating, um, there's usually a set of circumstances which lends itself uh, to negotiating versus hard bid. Oftentimes, it's early in the the process of a construction project. So um, a full set of documents may not be produced yet, a client could be still getting their arms around a a construction budget for the project and they also may be trying to understand the scope better and the constructability of it. So um, oftentimes that includes bringing your contractor in early as a partner. And so, um, you know, most of most of a negotiated project can still be hard bid out, a, a large percentage of the overall negotiated price. That's because in negotiated projects you still have the opportunity to hard bid out the subcontractors on the project. So, But there is really valuable information to be gained early in a process and a contractor having them on board early and negotiating out their fee, their general conditions and all of that, that information can be negotiated out early. So. Yeah, and sometimes I think, uh, to your point about um, not necessarily having the scope defined, a lot of times when it's nice to have a contractor be negotiated is when an owner comes and says, here's what I wanna do, but I don't really know how to go about it, Mm -hmm. and they use that contractor to help develop that budget 
figure out how much they can afford, how much they can't afford. And then we can still competitively bid the subcontractor work um, in order to make sure you're getting a good competitive price. Yeah. Actually, and, and it's, uh, it's, it can be quite a, trans, a very transparent process as well mm -hmm. um, because you're showing a client your, your numbers right up front because you're negotiating that out. Right. As opposed to with a hard bid, usually it's just a lump sum price. You turn in your price and you say it's going to cost you $5 million to build this building. And regardless of how much money the general contractor makes, the owner is paying $5 million. That's correct. One if, bottom line. Yeah. If it's negotiated, you're going to see all the math behind how you got to that $5, five million. And there may even be clauses in there to return some savings, um, if there is any. That's a very good point. That's one of those things that can be negotiated. Right. Mm -hmm. And not so much if you hard bid. So we've got a good sense of what each of these are. Um, let's talk about why an owner might want to use one or the other. There are perceived benefits of hard bidding and there are perceived benefits of negotiating. And so let's start with the benefits of hard bidding. So the perceived benefit of a hard bid is you're going to get the lowest price. And the truth is that you will have the lowest price on the day one. You'll have the lowest initial price, but at the end of the day, there's no guarantee that you'll have the lowest price overall. Right, because uh, in the case of hard bidding, you're bidding off of the documents, and the documents are what the contractor bids, whether they are realistic or not. So as soon as you have a change, a, a contractor can write a change order and raise the price. Right. You have the lowest price based on the documents that are provided, which may not be the end result of the building that you want. Yeah, okay. And so then perceived benefits of negotiation, Todd? Absolutely. Well, first of all, one of the things is you can find out about long lead items early. Um, in a hard bid situation, um, your contractor's not on board early to tell you those, identify those items and tell you that. Um, by negotiating a project and bringing your general contractor on board, you can identify long lead items and you can pre-order them so they get there by the time construction is ready to start. Um, the other thing is some, some projects are complicated. They're, they might be a healthcare project or a school project that is occupied. And along with the set, the scope of work that needs to be bid out, there is uh, the constructability of the project itself. So determining how you're going to phase the project, if you have to build temporary structures, if it's a seismic upgrade, you may have to um, cut into the finishes to get to the structure and then patch back. And that scope is a little bit harder to define on a hard bid job. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, bring a contractor on board that can identify that and lay that scope out for the subcontractors to bid on is important. We, we can write bid packages to, to help um, the subcontractor community and trade partners bid that scope out properly. Flushing out um, design um, and, and uh, constructability issues up front. Um, I think a contractor can, working with an architect and with design team, um, has a lot to add to that process and can influence the, the design, both structurally and architecturally, um, to design a more effective and uh, efficient design cost-wise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't really have that flexibility usually on a hard bid situation. You've got the drawings, they're already designed. You bid it, you go. Right. Versus if it's negotiated, you've got that time up front to really vet everything out and say, Meh, I see where you're going um, here, but here's maybe a different way to build it that will save you money. Yeah. And those are harder to vet out when you're just putting together a price. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So we've talked a little bit about how hard bid projects tend to be just hard bid, uh, lump sum, the price is what it is. In, a, in the negotiated scenario, um, it might be a guaranteed maximum price. And mm -hmm. what that means is maybe there are some contingencies or allowances in there. Maybe you find an efficiency as you go. Um, and if you've got it written into your contract because it's negotiated, if there's some savings at the end, you can get that savings back. You don't get that back if it's a lump sum. Price is what it is, and I think that can be one of the real big differences between those two things. And I think you're talking from an owner's point of view, mm -hmm. is that um, um, on a hard bid, you have no idea if there's uh, savings that were realized during the construction project or through some buyout stages or anything like that. The number is what it is. Yep. Um, in negotiated work, yes, you can negotiate that in, and there could be a savings clause where 
either a portion or all of those savings go back to the client. Is it true too that usually on a hard bid project, um, there's not necessarily a schedule that you're bound to. A lot of times if it's just based on lowest price, then it takes as long as it takes. And if that means that the contractor does it half time in order to meet their price, that's true versus typically in a negotiated contract, you've got a scheduled date that you're gonna hit and you're finding out how to build it so that you meet that schedule. Would you say that's true? I think that's true. And I think one of the things that Todd mentioned earlier was just the long lead items. And if if you have a hard bid and you start the clock when they award that project and with a negotiated project, you could start that clock early to get those to get those products on site. Mm -hmm. So if they are not going to show up for six months, then you start the project at month five so you're ready for it at six months. So the negotiated could procure some of those items quicker. Yeah, that's in today's climate, certainly a huge issue that we are we are facing. And I think along with that, with not only long lead items, but um, a, a schedule, a, a, a hard bid job doesn't account for risks as much as a negotiated project. In a negotiated project, you're spending that time, you have a, pre, a period of pre-construction where you're identifying all those risks, both from a schedule standpoint, from a cost standpoint, and you're communicating that with the rest of the team, whether that's the, and that includes the owner and the, and the design team. So I think the negotiated projects end up being a little less risky for both the owner and the client. Right, so that's a great segue into the challenges that each brings um, because there are challenges with both, both methods. Um, let's talk about that a little more specifically with hard bids. Um, we've talked about long lead items. We've talked a little bit about risk. What else is there? Well, you know, I, I, one of the examples I use, it, it's kind of funny when I'm walking on a job walk and it's a hard bid job, it's, it's actually, Quite comical because a lot of the general contractors will walk around with the owners and they'll walk from room to room and no one's saying a word because they know even if there is a verbal answer on a job walk it's what's on the drawings that matters that's what it boils down to so if it doesn't show up on the so there's there's there could be risk out there that everybody's thinking about as they're doing a job walk but on bid day they're only gonna bid what's on the documents and a lot of times subcontractors are not asking questions during a bid walk because they know that everybody else is going to bid just what's on the set of plans and if they fill in the blanks and add that other scope to their bid they're not going to be the low bidder mm -hmm. so therefore everybody bids exactly what's on the drawings and if there's additional scope later on down the road in order to make up that difference is going to have to be result in a change order yeah. which is you know conflict between owner, cont contractor, and architect. Right. So. I feel like that's one of the big misnomers that um, building owners may have is that contractors are just greedy. They want, you know, change order, change order, change order. And the reality is it's not actually how we like to operate, but you have no choice if you're going to win the work. And so it creates a conflict between a general contractor and an owner because the contractor doesn't have the opportunity really to solve the problems in their original price if they're hard bidding the work. Right. With the conflict that's set up then the between the owner and the general contractor, the general contractor and the subcontractors, it just makes for a bad um, bad relationship from the start. And the, the contractor does not want to have change orders. The more change orders there are, the more correspondence there is, the more paperwork there is. They would rather have the drawings be perfect and have no opportunity for change orders, but mm -hmm. they'd, they'd rather not do it. But if you have to do it, and some people do, some people make their money on change orders on a project. And it's just, it creates a, it creates a conflict throughout the whole project. Right, because if you're hard bidding a job, the owner doesn't necessarily know what the fee is for your work. So now you've got your lump sum price and you move forward and maybe they raise their fee on their change order pricing. And so now all of a sudden you had the cheapest price at the beginning, but you don't later. Mm -hmm. And the unfortunate part is that because of the hard bid mentality and the fact that if you're not low, it people can play games with that a little bit. And so you're in some ways adding more risk than you need to um, because you're not negotiating. It is ironic with a lot of public money, public projects, um, there's um, 
an effort to try to hard bid out most of the work because there's a sense that the, to the general public there's a sense that um, you're having a, you're creating a competitive process and you're getting the best number lowest number. In reality, the negotiated process allows for more transparent numbers to be shown and negotiated out for a full scope to be vetted up front, eliminating and reducing risk on the projects because a contractor has, the, has had the opportunity to be involved in pre-construction. So in essence, it's, it's actually the opposite. I think the negotiated work is much more transparent mm -hmm. in, in those type of projects. I think it's unfortunate that um, it'd be really hard to actually quantify mm -hmm. whether that's true or not, right? Because no project is ever the same. There's always different, mm -hmm. different factors that play into the price. So there's no way for us to really look at and say, if you hard bid this project, you're going to be X percent higher than if you had negotiated it, and, which is really unfortunate. But certainly we have seen um, that that is true. Mm -hmm. So if somebody doesn't want to just look at price, what options do they have to identify whether a contractor is qualified for the work and whether they would be a good partner for negotiating their project? Well, I think um, it's interesting because actually some of the school districts are, they do have like a hybrid uh, model where they are pre-qualifying general contractors for projects. So they pre-qualify them. Um, based on their qualifications for a specific type of work. It might be a specific market sector, it might be healthcare, it might be higher education, it might be mission critical. And then, once they create that short list of general contractors, then they hard bid them out. Ultimately, it's still a hard bid project, and so it's the contractors will bid what's on the documents. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we do see them moving more towards a full request for qualifications mm -hmm. and awarding the project yeah. based on that. Maybe they include fee or um, general conditions or something based on a, an assumed schedule. Yes. And honestly, that does create a more level playing field when you're bidding against another other general contractors. When, they're, when you know you're bidding against a qualified contractor um, that's going to meet a certain quality and, and uh, you know, provide, you know, meet the schedule, et cetera, um, that does make us feel better about hard bidding those right. type of situations. So. Yeah. Right, that makes sense. So, Chris, why is it that it might be deceiving for somebody to just look at the low bid price from contractors? So, if they're just looking at the low bid, then you're looking at one number across the board and comparing it to others. You don't know anything behind it, who their subcontractor team is, um, who their on-site team is, who their superintendent is, their project manager. You're just evaluating it on price, which is just one component of a project. Um, and so we want our price to be all-inclusive and philosophically for our company, we want to do the right thing. Um, when we see, we look at a set of drawings, we go through a walkthrough, we find out that there may be a door that's required and, and we know that it's required to get out of the room or into the room or maybe the hardware is specified on the drawings as being simpler than it's required. It's hard for us to bid exactly what's on the drawings because we want to do the right thing. We want to put the door in, but if we're going to win the work, we have to be the low price and that just causes internal conflict for us as well. Yeah. It, it really is um, challenging because it's easier to influence the dollars you spend up front. It's much easier to, to solve those problems in the pre-construction phase of the project. Find out if the doors are all where they're supposed to be, if the hardware is all that they're supposed to be, and solve the issues of constructability, how it gets built, what the timing is, what, if there's phasing required. All of those items are easier to figure out with the pre-construction uh, general contractor on your team. Yeah. So then. I mean, it seems like negotiating a project is kind of better for all, all parties, um, and yet GCs still hard bid work. So at what point do you say, I'm not hard bidding this? What are the factors that t says, I'm out, I'm not going to price this work? There's a couple of the factors that we weigh when we're deciding whether to hard bid a particular project or not. One is the completeness of the drawings. Um, how well they're done. Um, again, I mentioned that we want to do the right thing. If they're not complete, if, if subcontractors are not going to be able to get a complete scope and price put together, we don't want to be on the hook if they forget something or if they miss something. So if it's incomplete, if it's really complex, there's not the clear path of how the building gets constructed, those are a couple of items that we would 
decide on passing on a job. And then also, as Todd mentioned earlier, the level of competition. If there is competent general contractors that we're bidding against that we think uh, will do a fair job, then we will take that shot. But if it's uh, people that we know don't perform the quality of work that we perform, then we will possibly choose to pass on that one. It's kind of a case by case basis, but yes. But there are reasons not to go after that work. So then, why would you? Why would you hard bid, Todd? Well, good question. Um, you know, uh, diversifying revenue streams is one of ours. If you're trying to break into a new market sector, um, sometimes you have to build the resume up, and the only way to gain that those pro that project resume is to hard bid. Um, because like we explained earlier, when you're negotiating for a project, one of the things they typically like to see is that you have experience in that market sector to begin with. And the only way to gain that sometimes in our industry is to hard bid. So we will look at that on a case-by-case on case, um, basis. Now, one of the other things I think we'd like to understand too is the reputation of a client. And if they're fair, if they're a fair customer, um, that's someone we would tend to do business with. We treat you fair, we want to be treated fair back in return. So that's really important too. So we do check references. Um, if any of you owners are listening out there on the spot to this <laughs> podcast. Um, and, but you know, I think uh, it, there's another advantage. Um, I think it helps us keep our pulse on the market, what's happening out there. Um, we never want to get too complacent. And I think it keeps, helps us keep our pencil sharpened mm -hmm. and by hard bidding projects. And we, and we do it quite often. Um, we do a majority of our work's more negotiated, I would say, but um, we're not afraid to hard bid and, and be competitive out there. One of the things that we, we will also decide is if we have a competitive advantage. If we're good at this project, then we think we can do it more efficient, faster, better, and more economically than our competition, then it's worth us taking a shot at to make a possibly higher fee than on any other project. Yeah, that's a great point. I think we've got a good picture now of the differences between hard bidding and negotiating. Um, you might feel like we're biased a little bit towards the negotiated procurement strategy. There are some benefits to both. And, and I think one kind of last point is there can be some hybrids. Mm -hmm. The public schools use it where maybe you pre-qualify on qualifications and then you hard bid, but there are ways to do competitive proposals also that are more still competitive, but it's not just based on lowest price. So price might be one component of it, your experience might be another, um, your safety program might be another. Um, there's some different things in there that, that people might consider. We even had a project that we bid um, a while back, it was a proposal. It was based on fee and GCs primarily, but also experience. And one of the things they wanted to see was your ability to weld stainless steel nicely. Mm -hmm. And that was a critical component. So they added that to their pre-qualification process. Mm -hmm. So I think owners can get really creative to make sure that if they're looking at um, their project and they've got a really high standard for quality, maybe they've got a lot of process piping, um, maybe they have food safety standards, Maybe it's a school and they need to keep their kids safe and that's priority one. Maybe it's a hospital and infection control is highest priority. There are ways to set up some competitive scenarios to find the right contractor that aren't just based on lowest price that are really gonna hit on those items that, that are most important to you. So to those listening, if you still have questions about hard bidding or negotiating procurement strategies, we'd love to hear from you. You can find us on Facebook, our LinkedIn, send us a message on our website. We'd love to engage with you, follow up um, and answer your questions. So to Chris and Todd, thank you for joining me for another episode of the Perlo podcast. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Alyssa. Thank you for joining us for the Perlo podcast. Visit us online at perlo.biz. Subscribe to catch our future episodes and join us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube to discuss all things construction. And finally, work hard, do what's right, and make it fun. Until next time.